Caddis, Maximus here. I was going to do a video. I had just done a video about uh, the way the power cord was shorted out and how <laughs> electric drill could kill you. I was going to do a video about how to replace a power cord, but I've done a few of those videos and I think I'm going to wait for a better or more opportune unit. This is a late 30s or not, late or, excuse me, late 30s or mid 1940s, kind of World War II era, quarter inch original Milwaukee hole shooter drill. This is a very old one because it doesn't even say S114 on it. And it has sleeve bearings. This was, and it was actually a short lived era where Milwaukee used sleeve bearings. Um, right around the 40s or early 50s, they moved to all ball bearings. And that's one of the things that set Milwaukee apart in the 75, 80 years since is that they always use rolling bearings. They're one of the best manufacturers about including as many rolling bearings as, as they can in their tools. It really has been one of the things that set them apart. So I'm not going to do like a big review or how to fix a power cord because this is one of the older sleeve bearing ones. The slightly newer units actually had a vent panel on the bottom and a more rounded gear case instead of the stepped one. And those were the ones that had ball bearings. I'm going to wait till I can dig up one of those. They did try to mitigate that. They do have an oil port here. And right here, that is actually the back. That is the rear <laughs> bronze bearing for the back of the motor. And they also had an oil fill port right there. So I figured we'd just turn this into a teardown video. Cut this. Since it does have the uh, Jacob's Chuck and the Chuck key, I will be keeping that old Jacob's Chuck. Easiest way to remove chucks. Some people use Allen wrenches, but the problem with those, they work. Or like this case, it's a quarter inch drill. You take a quarter inch Allen wrench, you'd chuck it up, and then you would hit it counterclockwise to unscrew the chuck. But that puts a lot of sideways force. And uh, generally speaking, if you have any type of impact device, I would use that instead. This does not appear to be the original chuck key. I know it's not because it fits really loose and doesn't actually interface with the chuck very well. It could also be just how darn worn it is. You want to see a worn Jacob's chuck key? Look at that. It's actually worn down. This drill has been used so much. It's actually worn down the teeth on the chuck key. So I found the easiest way on bigger chucks. It's more difficult. You got to use bigger impacts, but on smaller chucks, I usually just use an impact driver like this and usually they'll pop right off like that. On this front end, we do have a, it's like a, it's a type of a seal, maybe like a leather seal or some kind of fabric seal to help particles getting back up through the spindle and damaging those bearings. I wonder, I wonder if we can pry it out this way. Eh. Oh, it's actually metal. It may be pressed on there. Could be threaded as well. Anyway, we're going to take a quick look at uh, the electrical side of this first because that's what was causing so many issues for me. We're going to release the bottom plate and the top plate just to see what was shorting out. Get rid of these tiny little flathead screws. Come on now. That screw's a bit damaged. And the top plate, and then we have one screw on the back, which is actually what's securing the holding the trigger unit in place. Tiny little screws, easy to strip out. Always end up getting loose, it seems. That one's really, seems like a different unit. Very slim, very narrow slot in this one. Yeah, that's not an original screw. Of course it's not. This one happens to be a sheet metal screw. Now oh, this cover, <laughs> this is an aluminum sheet metal cover. Yeah. 
and it's really stuck on there. There we go. And then the last screw holding in the trigger unit itself. That was probably the biggest Achilles heel of these old tools and uh, why I like old tools, but really from the 50s or newer, because when you start getting into the 40s and 30s, uh, wiring was not as a big a priority, and it ends up being just a real nightmare. I've run into a lot of different drills, Thor's and all sorts of brands, where it's just an absolute nightmare trying to rewire them. They just, no thought was put into it. These aren't split cases. It's a bear to try to get the trigger units out like this. You gotta fiddle with them, pull the trigger, pry them out like this. This one's still not wanting to totally cooperate. Come on now. Wow. You can see how old this switch is. It's an open frame switch. Pretty neat how it works. What you have is you just have the two metal contacts. When you pull the trigger, this thing goes over center and rolls down, and that's how it makes contact. Pretty interesting. Actually, pretty reliable design. This design would last a very long time, but pretty fascinating where it's an over center, and it just causes this bar to cross over those contacts. I don't know if it's this terminal. They should have had some kind of fiber resin impregnated fiber cover that wraps around the switch to prevent these terminals from wanting to touch the side of the tool. It could have been that, could have been this old wiring here. Any number of things are, could be the root cause of why this thing was shorting out. Some electrical tape, that's a no-no. I will be keeping the switch just in case I do run into uh, some other old tools. Because this is a pretty unique switch. It actually does have a lock. You do that and then you slide this upwards. And then it catches that post there. And that's what locks it. Pretty secure locking mechanism, but not the easiest to actually unlock. So if you actually were using this and slid this up... Uh, this thing would be gone until you really got a good grip and you can see how they get sticky and <laughs> not the safest trigger locking mechanism that's for sure but still an interesting little trigger get this wire cut get this thing out of here although we do have this part here which could also be handy in some situations that's for sure Way too small cutters for this wire, but that's another handy part. All right. So here it is. This is the piece of uh, insulated cardboard, essentially, that should have been wrapped around that trigger. And obviously somebody did a horrible job in rebuilding this. Anyway, now that we've done that, we might as well remove the brushes. Regular old carbon brushes. They do have integrated wire. I don't know if these are original or replaced. They probably replaced at some point. This drill is pretty old and does seem like it's had a few hours. The trick to removing these, uh, these plastic brush covers are very brittle. So you really want to use the biggest screwdriver that can fit. So you don't have to worry about stripping them out. These brushes look good. I also save all these old brush caps because those, these ones that are brass with the over mold. These over molds can crack and break apart and then you just have the exposed metal. So I always save those. Besides that, not a lot else in here. We do have an oil port right here. We know that it's an oil port because it says oil right there. And this thing's kind of interesting how this continuously oils the back bearing. Now you can just put drops right there, but the way this is designed is you have this little grub screw flathead grub screw and then you have a spring and like a little piece of leather or fabric and that is like a wick so you put some drops of oil in there it soaks this up and then this is always wiping against the back of the motor essentially providing a continuous form of lubrication 
keep that. And then the last couple of things are the screws that actually retain the brushes and the body of the drill. And those are also going to be some grub screws, and I'll save those. I always, when I do teardowns like this, I always save things like the grub screws just because of how uh, handy they are. A lot of modern tools are um, metric thread, and so these are going to be some older uh, imperial or fractional thread, which makes them just a bit more useful and a little bit harder to find. Plus, those are going to be, you know, there's only going to be so many sizes of those. So if I run into other, not only old Milwaukee tools, but other brands of old uh, tools, it's nice to have, you know, some proper, properly vintage fasteners to use with it. We can tell that these screws are kind of funky, so somebody's either retightened this or at least been in the gearbox at some point. Not a lot of parts to these. That's part of how these things were manufactured. They... Power tools these days are actually surprisingly complicated because it's much easier for them to make a bunch of different parts. These, like casing, is th literally three castings. The back casting, the diaphragm, and the front casting. That's absolutely it. These are going to be oily. This whole gearbox is going to be oily because, once again, you put drops of oil in it. I should probably take that out. Keep that too. Our little oil fill port here. A really stubby grub screw. Put that right there. Get this last screw out and we'll be into the gearbox. I believe this is a double reduction. I was checking so if you turn the spindle and the motor spins the same direction that you're turning the spindle then that's a double reduction. And if it turns the opposite direction, it's either a single reduction or a triple reduction. And they did try, so we, there's our double reduction gears. Here's something you don't really see, which uh, makes a pretty big difference to longevity. As you can see that the motor, actually I wonder, so the motor doesn't actually have a traditional front bearing and almost all power tools these days there's a bearing here that's what holds the front of the motor but interestingly enough on this Milwaukee it's the front half of the case that's supporting the motor spindle and since this doesn't have any bearings the motor just will come right out we can also see some pretty nice build quality cast aluminum fan they stopped doing these angled cuts, and I'm not sure why. I guess it's not quite as efficient. But you can see how they, you know, in the old days, they were really worried about debris getting in there and damaging the wires where the fan sucks in air. So they just completely covered all the wires. Absolutely no exposed wires whatsoever. Only on the front portion are they exposed with stamp welded contacts. Pretty good. These, in, these are brass bars, non-magnetic. Those are what they're using for the balancing. Balancing on this is seems okay, but they do have quite a bit of extra weight, as you can see there. Something else to note of design is that we do have our... What, oh, wow, this has actually suffered quite a bit of wear. There is no spindle, so the entire load of this front spindle is just a really long bushing. There is no back pin on all, on all drills now. There's going to be some kind of support in the front, and then a little post and something supporting it off the back. This reduction gear, the small teeth on this reduction gear are, pretty, are so beat up that it will not actually <laughs> slide past the final gear, which is kind of interesting. Oh, I don't think I've ever run into one quite that bad before. This thing just does not want to get out of there. We'll just work it by going one side. There we go. That is what some very worn teeth look like. They are all, they are slid over. They're almost completely stripped out. So I'm glad I'm tearing this down, not putting it back together. Obviously, there's no replacing this gear, and it is just about done. Just about gone. So, 
this drill wasn't worth keeping in the <laughs> wasn't worth keeping in the first place. So I'm glad I kind of skipped the extra effort of the video. That appears to have, the gear appears to have been braced. I wonder if I can get the spindle off. Maybe if I this ring here is pressed fit onto the spindle. Maybe some judicious tapping will get that out. Nope, it appears that this is either threaded on there. That's a permanently installed spindle. I think this was machined. I tried hitting it pretty judicious, judiciously with a hammer, even put it in the press, and it was just going to crack apart the gearbox before this wanted to come out. And the way they brazed the gear on, I'm surprised. I can see why Milwaukee, at some point... I guess in the 1940s or so, they just made a decision to really uh, change the design of their tools and give them ball bearings and actually make them more serviceable. Not a lot of other parts left here to talk about. I guess we'll go ahead and pull out the field. That's the last thing in here. These slot head screws have really narrow slots. I'll keep the grub screws, I'll keep these couple of screws here, but the other fasteners are already so beat up, they're not something that I'm going to be interested in actually keeping. They do have little lock washers. And... Well, usually they can be pretty tight, so I need a block of wood to tap it out. Some judicious taps got that uh, out. The wires do have spring clips, which hold them on to the brush guides. We got to figure out, remove, pop both of those off, which is always an interesting proposition when you're. Which wires holding this thing up? There's one old field, and the field is exemplary of the heavy duty nature. The wires are fully wrapped on the field. They haven't done, and no, almost no tool manufacturers do this on any kind of motor except for like electric jackhammers, demolition hammers, and and big rotary hammers. Pretty much nothing else is built like that. And last but not least, figure out which way these brush guides wanna... Sometimes they, there we go. So they wanna push out this way. And there's our billet brass, br brass brush guides. Now that we've got one out, it's actually easier to This other one was pretty darn stuck. Anyway, I'll be recycling all these metal parts, but this one's re reduced to the annals of history, mainly because of a design issue. This secondary reduction, just the teeth were not thick enough. Surprisingly enough, the motor teeth are just fine. And of course, the teeth on the bigger driven gear are okay, but they'll start they're a little bit of worn because once this one started getting, I mean, that's nearly stripped out. Once that starts happening, it starts taking out the gear it integrates with as well. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody who's been watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Till next time, Caddis Maximus out.